buenos días a todos. Muchas gracias por asistir a un nuevo seminario del programa de doctorado de estadística y optimización matemática aplicada del Centro de Investigación Operativa. Hoy tenemos con nosotros a Giorgio Bonamini, que trabaja en el grupo de teoría de juegos y computación de, de la Universidad Politécnica de Milán. Eh, en colaboración con los profesores, allí trabaja con el profesor Roberto Lucchetti y con la profesora Emanuela Colombo. Esta es del Departamento de Energía, porque él, su, su línea de investigación es teoría de juegos y, y energía. En particular es intentar aplicar la teoría de juegos para el desarrollo sostenible y pues, la implantación de redes eléctricas en, en zonas en las que bueno, pues es, hay difícil acceso o tiene pocos recursos económicos para ello. Entonces hoy nos va a hablar de algo que está relacionado con esto y con un proyecto que está en medias desarrollándose en, en la India, ¿no? eh, para tratar de implantar allí eh, redes de, de gestión energética para satisfacer las necesidades de... de bueno, ahora lo explicará él, no voy a dar yo la charla. Vale. Para las necesidades energéticas de los granjeros de allí. ¿vale? Pues nada, tiene, tiene la palabra. Vale. Eh, yo voy a hablar en inglés, si no es un problema, así las palabras que digo son las mismas que veis allí. Bueno, gracias Joaquín por la introducción. Eh, voy a repetir, yo soy... I'm sorry. <laughs> my, name, my name is Giorgio Bonamini. I am a PhD student from the Politecnico di Milano. I work in the Department of Mathematics but I'm in state collaboration with a group, uh, a research group in the energy department. Is uh, the group UNESCO chair in uh, energy for sustainable development, whose chairholder is uh, uh, Professor Emanuela Colombo. Uh, I'm here working with uh, Professor uh, Joaquin Sánchez Soriano and Professor Natividad Jorga Pascual. Today I'm going to tell you about uh, the work we have been doing uh, to develop a method to share the investment costs when we uh, want to uh, deploy uh, microgrid in rural areas. Um, first, I'm going to tell you why we are doing that. Second, I will give you, since I didn't know the background of the audience, um, I can imagine the, the background now, but <laughs> uh, so I prepared some slides about basic concepts that we are going to, that we are using in the model. Then I will show you the model and uh, the a real case study for the application of this model. Finally, our conclusions and our idea for future research. So, why we started to work on this problem? The United Nations last year defined 17 goals for the sustainable developments. And among them, the seventh is about universal energy access. But where are we today? 1.2 billion people do not have access to electricity. And if you look at the figures, most of them live in rural areas. But what about the future? The forecast of uh, World Bank and the International Energy Agency says that in 20 years, still 900 million people will not have access to electricity and will live in rural areas. So rural electrification, it's a big issue to solve. Um, in the International Institute for Environment and Development proposed as business model to give to electric to local cooperatives the, um, to make local cooperatives distribute electricity in rural areas. But when I read that, I wanted to look in the, at history and see if somebody had done the same. And this was done already in 1935 when the United States signed a Rural Electrification Act. And from that moment started a campaign that lasted 20 years where in the United States they um, could bring electricity on every farm. This was the, uh, the motto. And this was done through electric cooperatives. So the concept of the energy cooperative, it's kind of crucial in rural electrification. What is the purpose of this entity? Uh, it has two purposes. One, provide electricity, and second, to manage the system. But how can it do that? First, it has to interact with an external company that will provide hardware, so um, we can have the system. It can also provide a service for maintenance. 
Second, of course, it has to interact with the users to provide electricity. So our model focus, uh, basically our point of view is from the energy cooperative that uh, first, since it has to buy the system, wants to minimize the cost to supply electricity, to, to minimize the investment cost to supply er electricity. And second, at the beginning, uh, our idea is to share this cost among the users. So to understand how to allocate the cost in the grid. Okay, let's see some concepts that are going to be useful for the model. Uh, I'm going to briefly introduce uh, what is a facility location problem, what is cooperative game theory, and what is a rationing or a bankruptcy problem. Facility location problem, we need the demand and we need a supply. For the demand, we need the locations and the amount of demand for each, each location. For the supply, of course, we also need the candidate locations, so the candidate facilities. For each point, we need the maximum capacity that we can install. Then we need the cost to establish each facility and the cost of the connections. The, the goal of the problem in this case is to minimize the system cost due to the constraints of the demand and supply. We will see that, we will see that in, the, um, in the model more in details. For the cooperative game theory, what we need to know what is a game? A cooperative game is a pair NC, where N is the set of players, C is the cost function, where uh, for each subset of N we assign a cost. And the solution of this game is the allocation of the cost among the users. Not all of them are happy, um, because we need to understand if the, um, the group that we have formed and the allocation we have given uh, make the group stable. And this concept of stability is uh, connected with the concept of core. If, we, if our allocation satisfies the efficiency, the individual rationality, and the group rationality conditions, then our allocation belongs to the core. And that means that our coalition or our group will be stable with this allocation. So probably changing something here, they could be happy too. Rationing problems. A rationing problem can be defined as a, or as a tuple or as a pair, and where N is the set of agents, E is the estate, which is a non-negative uh, quantity, which will be, which should be distributed among the agents, and C are the claims, is a vector of, of all the claims of the claim of each agent over the estate. Necessary condition to have a rationing problem is that the sum of the claims is more is higher than the estate. Otherwise, we don't need to ration anything. We have sur surplus. Yeah, yeah, rationing because it's more so it's more generic. <laughs> Given a ba uh, bankruptcy or rationing problem, we need a rationing rule to distribute the estate among the agents. Um, we may use different rules. Uh, the standard ones are the constraint equal awards, the constraint equal losses, the proportional, and the Talmud. Um, the only thing we need to know is that we as you can see in the last part of the definitions, we have to allocate all the estate among the agents. So this is the condition that this is the more important as among is the common among the the rules. So now let's go and see the model. So our model is to share investment costs, and it's going to be divided in three parts. First, we are going to define a facility location problem without capacity constraints. Second we are going to introduce the capacity constraints. Third, we're going to need to use a rationing problem. So the first part, uh, I will show you the inputs and variables. Our inputs, okay, we need to know the set of users. Since we are in uh, rural areas or uh, we are using, uh, we have a, a grid, an electric grid, uh, we need to supply electricity and we need to know the appliances. In this case, we are imagining that one user is using one appliance. At this stage of the model, one user, one appliance. 
We know the power uh, of each appliance. So the i will be the power of user i of appliance i. Then we need to know the set of the facility locations, uh, the candidate facilities. Then the specific cost to install the power in candidate j will be fj. And cij with the specific cost to connect user i with location j. And Okay, we already, at the beginning, we also should know the maximum capacity, otherwise there, there is no reason to go in the second part. But in the variables we're using, are the first type is the power installing location J, and second is the maximum power transmitted in link IJ. So in this part, we don't use the capacity constraint. We don't even consider it. So the, the primal is defined the, as a linear program, uh, which is a relaxation of a mixed integer linear program that is usually used for facility location problems. So here you can see the objective function. First, the first term is to establish uh, the cost to establish the facilities, and the second, the cost to establish the connections. And here we have the constraints. The first one uh, is basically the um, that all the demand that is asked by a user is, gi is given by the cables, so that he's connected to. And the second one is that the, the facility, uh, each facility is providing all the electricity that will go, at, at least all the electricity that is needed to, um, to each user, by each user. With this primal, we can define the dual. And uh, the advantage here is that in the optimum, the value of the objective function of the dual is exactly the same as the one of the primal for st the strong duality theorem, which means that here, if we want to give some uh, economic sense to the objective function of the dual, we are trying to understand the total willingness to pay of, it, of all the users to establish the system. And in the optimal, will correspond to the cost, the minimum cost of the system. Uh, in the dual, our variables are, are the willingness to pay of user i, I'll say ui, for receiving one unit of power. Then its total willingness to pay will be di times ui. And uh, vj is the price to install one unit of power in location j. Looking at the primal, <coughs> if we take in consideration the slack variables, S, I, and S, J, we can say that um, the optimal solution of the primal, in the optimum, uh, our slack variables are null, which means that all the power that is supplied is uh, given to the demand. So there is the, our uh, constraints become equalities. Second, the, the price to establish the facility is exactly the cost of the facility, the specific cost of the facility. And what's more important is that each user is willing to pay at the optimum the cost of the cheapest facility a uh, user I could be connected to. This is very important because that means that we don't even need to solve the dual. We just need the, 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 the cost to establish the facility J's, or the facilities and the, and the connection costs. Um, still in this part, we can define a facility location game where we uh, assign to the empty set a cost zero and uh, to the sub coalition of N, uh, all the S sub coalition of N, the optimum uh, the optimum of the primal where we just consider the users in an S. And with this uh, definition of this game, for this game, we know, we have proved that the total willingness to pay, and so, okay, the total willingness to pay of each user is kind of an allocation and belongs to the core, which means that the core is non empty. So, uh, the allocations that we obtain are stable. And second, we can use the solution of the dual uh, as an allocation. Now, let's step in the second part. So now we do introduce the capacity. 
basically it's the same but with the capacity constraint. So we just have a limit on the capacity in each facility. Now the dual is a little bit different. Okay. Uh, here is more compact, but you can see that we have a new term in the objective function. And this is, let's say it's a discount for the fact that since we are limiting the, the capacity of some facilities, the users have to co um, need to connect to other, con uh, to other facilities that, that are not the minimum cost that I told you before. So they, are, they should be willing to pay a little bit more. So on one side, the maximum willingness to pay, so in the optimum, we, we know that, we, that each user will pay a little bit more. But on the other side, here, we have a discount. So we need to share this discount. And why we need to share this discount? Because as you can see here, this is JF. So, well, well, before it was OK, I, but he's, here is J. So it's uh, depending on the facilities, not on the users. So we don't know how to share it. This is the reason why we need a rationing, we, we need a ra rationing approach. And in this case, we are, I'm going to tell you something more. I'm going to uh, say that we, we are not going to use a standard rationing problem like, like I showed you before, but we need some references. OK, rationing with references. We need the set of users. Claims in this case are uh, is the maximum willingness to pay. The estate is the system investment cost that we obtain uh, by the, uh, in the second part. And our reference are the minimum willingness to pay. So basically, the optimum of the dual without the capacity constraint. We, def we, um, we can say that we, can, we have proved that C, uh, so the sum of the claims is higher than the state, and this is higher than the sum of the reference, and these are all non-negatives. And so we, can fa we face a zero rationing problem. So a zero rationing problem is defined as uh, in our case, is the, the estate, then the, the references, and then the claims. So we have a rationing problem, we need a rationing rule. A, ra a zero rationing rule must verify two conditions. First, the amount that is distributed should be between the reference and the claim. Second, as the other uh, as a normal rationing rule, uh, the sum of the allocations must be the state. So we are going to do it in two steps. The first, we are going to distribute the references because this is the minimum willingness to pay. We know that all the users will support the system paying this amount. The second, we are going to uh, we will need to allocate the remaining state. So how we do that? Basically, we are going to define a, a normal uh, ration, standard rationing problems. We define the new, I, I call it, we call it remaining claims. And we will have a new but uh, standard rationing problem, OK? And we will use a uh, standard rationing rule to allocate this state, this, this new state, this remaining state. So basically what we do with the uh, rationing with reference in case we of zero rationing to obtain our final payment first we allocate all the references and second we find the additional payments uh, to add to any ref to each reference. Okay, now let's go in the application part. So uh, our case study as Joaquin said um, is a case of rural electrification. So this is the reason why I told you the problem at the beginning. And uh, it's in a place where I personally have been. Uh, it's a village in rural India. It's called Katkaun. Um, what I maybe need to include is that uh, I'm also part of Engineering Without Borders. And we are collaborating with these farmers to try to understand how they can have uh, better access to electricity. Uh, I say farmers because it's a village, it's a rural village, and basically everyone there 
uh, every inhabitant of the village is a farmer. So this is the reason why you say farmers. So <coughs> uh, the scope uh, of this project is to help uh, farmers to have electricity to irrigate their lands. In our application, we are considering 15 farmers that have been interviewed. And each farmer owns one electric pump for irrigation. So now, what, what we want to give to them? Uh, the supply that we want to give is, uh, okay, we imagine that we are going to use one candidate in every land. The farmer has given us the position where he can put the facility. And uh, we are going to put solar photovoltaic panels because they are uh, cheaper to maintain and uh, they, they can be independent from the national grid. It, since we use photovoltaic panels, we are going to need some surface of the land. So we are, these panels will, let's say, steal the land to the, um, to the farmers. So we need to include the loss of land in the cost of the facility. And also, we are constrained by the, by the land, by the dimension of the land, by the size of the land. So we will have also a capacity constraint. This is just to give you an idea about the demand. Okay? This is the maximum capacity of each of them. In this case, uh, knowing the, the size of the land, we, uh, since the farmers didn't tell us, we imagine 1% as the size of the land that can be, can be occupied or uh, used for uh, production of electricity. This is for every farmer. And so, uh, solving the primal, of the facility constraint, uh, with the capacity constraints, we see that some of them, uh, basically we are reaching the maximum capacity in every field, okay? Um, just to help you with some of the users, let's take, for example, the number, player number 14. He's connected with candidate, in loca candidate location, apart from his location, in, uh, with 4 and 5, because they are the, his neighbors. And they have space. Okay, their demand is less than the maximum capacity. But we if we see, if we look at the ca installed capacity in location four and five, we see that we have reached the maximum capacity. B this is the number 14 that is using their land. Okay, now let's look at the economics. We know the sum of the claims, the state and the references, so we have a zero rationing problem. So we need to find the final payments using the reference and the additional payments. First, the references. Um, as you can see, the 14, for example, as before, is the one that is, has to pay a little bit more, is willing to pay more. Now, the remaining estate, uh, okay, the numbers you can see are kind of big, and the remaining estate is really small, but this is the reason why we are introducing the rationing problem, because we want to avoid that for a few euros we have fights among farmers. We cannot we cannot, uh, we don't want that. So we know the claims, we know the reference, and we can uh, see what are the remaining claims. So using those, uh, we have tried the four standard uh, rules of, uh, in ra of rationing problems. Mm, what's imp what we can see here is that uh, I think that the most uh, important one is the number 8, or again we can look at the number 14, but the number 8 is, um, you can see the difference here. Okay, with some rules he is not, uh, um, let's say, uh, doesn't, help them, doesn't help him so much, it, compared to the others, these are the on, only the additional uh, payments. So what we can see if we take, for example, the Talmud, which was the green one of before, we see that 
we are just adding a very small uh, um, contribution to the minimum willingness to pay that we have computed before. So I also added an, another, um, I, I wanted to play a little bit more with the model. So I said, okay, we know the land size and let's say that for uh, more than 500,000 uh, square meters, uh, here we, I can put as much uh, capacity as I want and here zero. And what happens? Okay, this is, you can imagine that Okay, no one is going to build anything in his land apart from number 10 and number 11. In this case, the estate is basically the same as the claims. Uh, the reference you will see um, are smaller than the estate. We still have a zero rationing problem. Okay. Here, just to be sure, I plotted also the old references and these are the same because they depend just on the data of the inputs. We don't even need to solve uh, any linear program. And here we have the remaining estate. It's a little bit more. Before it was 8,000, now it's six, 67,000 euros. Um, basically, with any of the, of the rules, we can see that we, the additional payment is the same apart from the 10 of the 11 that are hosting everybody. And here we can see that, um, compared with before, uh, the final payments, we, we really can see that are, a little, that are bigger than before for all, all, basically all of them apart the 10 and the 11. So the conclusions, uh, first, more in general, I believe, uh, and I think also my collaborators, that facility location problems can really help um, electric cooperatives uh, when we face problems of rural electrification. And second, when we add uh, capacity constraints, we need uh, to add to add on uh, a zero rationing problem. Uh, since I'm still playing and researching uh, the model, and uh, these are our, our, our idea of a future research. First, I told you before that there was, we proved that the core of the dual without the capacity constraints is not empty, but we didn't prove it with uh, in the case with the capacity constraints, so this is left. Uh, second, we are deploying a system uh, which will be used and um, a part of the solar uh, panels we are going to put uh, batteries. That means that we are uh, going to generate a common resource and we need to understand how to share the costs of this common resource and how to manage the common resource. And this is the most uh, Let's say we, here basically we change everything because uh, we, are, uh, we have considered cost functions that are linear, but let's think about the solar panels. We cannot buy one panel and a half, we, or we buy one or we buy two. So we have a discrete function, uh, and so in this case we need to consider uh, nonlinear cost functions. Uh, here uh, some the reference of the parts I explained to you. And uh, in Hindi they say Danyabad, which means thank you. Okay. Puntos donde se instalan los paneles solar, solares o ¿no? el suministro de energía, se da, tú los das dados antes, como una, de forma provisional. Pero en, el, en, en la aplicación en India son los, los granjeros los que te dicen, pues yo lo pondría aquí. Sí. ¿no? Pero eso además, si 
eh, no se tiene cierta información a priori o ellos no te lo dan dado o no te fías de que ese sea el mejor punto donde mejor dar solo aprovechar, había que hacer un estudio previo ¿no? para ver dónde están los mejores... Sí, esto lo habíamos pensado. Habíamos pensado de incluir varias facilities, varios candidatos por cada parcela. Y elegir la mejor en función de... Pero de esta forma es más fácil por dos razones. Uno, para resolverlo. Y dos, porque tienes que... Como vas a preguntar cuál es la, la potencia de la playa, de la, de la bomba, al final le puedes preguntar dónde puedo poner... o de, dónde te fastidia menos la, la facility. Claro, pero si... En, en los casos en que necesitan mucha demanda, ¿no? que tienen mucha demanda y en otro lugar se aprovecha más, ahí es un puesto de eh, dónde te fastidia menos, pero vas a tener mucha más energía al mismo coste de instalación. Sí, esto se cambia solo cambiando el, el coste de instalación de cada parcela. Vale, y, en el, y luego cuando has ampliado, que se veían las, las parcelas más grandes, cuando son parcelas vecinas, Perdón. se pueden suministrar una a otra, ¿no? Es esto. Sí. Eh, cuando creo que era la, la 14 cuando sí, sí, había dicho que sí, sí. Si, tiene, si son vecinas y a uno le sobra energía se la puede dar al otro también los costes son de parte ¿no? sí. eso es lo que más me ha entendido vale. ¿alguna cuestión más? ¿algo adicional? cuando has dicho no lineal te referías a que puede ser un problema entero Varias veces ha dicho no se puede poner un panel y medio. ¿O no? ¿O es que la función de coste sea.? No, es, cambia la función de coste. ¿Más preguntas? Yo tengo alguna. Es, ¿cómo afectan las reglas de racionamiento en el comportamiento de los individuos a la hora de colaborar? Es decir, el, el efecto es si sí, puede ocurrir que haya algún granjero que decida no participar y después aprovecharse de todos los demás y participar de la red que está al margen de, de la red nacional. Sí. Esto teóricamente no, no puede pasar por cómo está definido el modelo porque esto quiere decir que si alguien no quiere participar y luego se quiere conectar eh, no va a tener eh, no va a utilizar la energía que, 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 que necesitaría porque el sistema está dimensionado para los que han, habían dicho de participar que participaban desde el principio entonces si alguien se añade no va a tener el servicio que quiere pero si lo hace de forma pirata chuparse a la red como hace tienes que tener tienes que tener en cuenta es que esta es la parte más de operations entonces la vamos a incluir después pero para la parte de inversión inicial sí que no tendría que participar desde el principio. ¿Y si se quisiese añadir después es más rentable o no? Es más rentable. Para él es lo mismo. Tendría que ser lo mismo y luego lo que, lo que tiene que pagar y lo, eh, añade lo que tiene que pagar, se añaden las placas solares que se necesitan que añadir y luego lo que sobre se comparte entre los, los que estaban antes. Si a uno le falta el suministro, puede decir, me planto al margen del sistema y me lo me autoabastezco. Mm, esto lo está mirando ayer. Porque lo que, lo que sale con este problema, mi idea es que es, a, también se forman las coaliciones directamente desde, desde cero. Porque hay algunos que sí que comparten, pero hay otros, si ponemos... Por ejemplo, no ponemos capacity constraints, restricciones de capacidad. Cada uno se, po se planta su, su propia eh, facility. Entonces, hemos construido una, una coalición de eh, singletons. Tiene que ser más caro, debería, para tener sentido que se vuelva, ¿no? Eso, es, eso es depende de, de cómo se dimensiona y de, y de los costes. Y de cuánto es tan distante uno del otro. Sí, también me imagino que dependerá de la concentración de las parcelas. Porque claro, un sistema que hubiese, tuviésemos 
400 parcelas juntas, ahí la colaboración sería mucho más efectiva que con solo 15 parcelas. Sí, lo que, lo que falta aquí, bueno, que no os he dicho, es que aquí estamos diciendo, esta es tu bomba y esta es la potencia que vas a utilizar todo el día. Eh, más o menos, esto es como un worst case scenario. Estamos sobredimensionando el sistema porque no tenemos las baterías. No están incluidas dentro, dentro del coste, no están explicitadas en la función de coste del, ni del primer primal. Esto se complica mucho, bueno, se complica un poco el problema, depende de luego cómo lo, lo modelicemos, pero eh, si, si luego os ponemos la batería, teóricamente eh, se po podría dicho, mmm, decir, se evitaría esto de que cada uno se pone por su cuenta. Pues nada, pues ya está. ¿Hay alguna, alguna, alguna cuestión adicional? ¿Alguna cosa? Pues nada, muchas gracias, Giorgio. Gracias a vosotros y bueno, yo mañana me voy, entonces. <risa> <risa> Saludos a todos. Que has compartido con algunos de ellos el espacio. Pues nada, pues muchas gracias por, por tu charla y, y nada, pues cuando quieras puedes, puedes volver por aquí. Está grabado esto. <risa> <risa> vale.